everyone. Sienta here with another Rambler for you. And today is the last of the Seven Deadly Sin series. It is Wrath. Last because W is last alphabetically. And Wrath is one of those things that I think we don't tend to talk about a whole lot these days. It, we tend to view it as kind of a synonym for anger. And it's usually in the phrase Wrath of God, which is something that will probably come up in here, but I intend to talk about at a future point in time. But the idea of Wrath, I don't think is just anger. To me, it has to do with kind of a desire for justice. That's what the wrath of God is about. It's about basically God's judgment upon people who have sinned against him. The issue here, just to kind of break down some some aspects of it, the desire for justice isn't bad, but the problem with wrath that turns into a seven deadly sin type of wrath is when it turns into a vengeance or vigilantism, basically when we make ourselves into judge incorrectly, which is what happens, I think, when, when wrath becomes seven deadly sin sins. This is, again, not talking about mere anger, uh, although anger can be something that can lead to sin anger in itself is not a sin. Uh, The Bible itself says, in your anger, do not sin. Not that becoming angry is a sin. I don't think emotions are going to be themselves sinful, but rather what we do with them or how we uh, engage with them is where the problems can develop. But there's a couple of other issues with wrath, not just trying to take over a judge role that doesn't belong to us, but also that wrath tends to be executed because there is a, there's a righteous anger that can be a component of wrath, and it tends to be executed, or it can very easily be executed, in a sort of mind that has been consumed by anger, by fury, by wrath. And this sort of area tends to be extremely harsh. It tends to lack room for mercy. And it can also be especially bad in in large groups. So just to kind of separate a few things here, because again, I've written some notes for this, as I have for all of these, just to make sure I had my thoughts kind of understood and to make sure I understood what I was going to talk about. So there's there's a couple of significant issues with this seeking justice and wrath. So, like I said, severity of punishment. Severity of punishment tends to be a a big one, especially because a lot of what this wrath would be is about executing that desire for justice in the heat of the moment, in a very vengeful frame of mind, which tends to lead to very severe punishments relative to crimes. And also on top of that, not just the severity of the punishment, but also the lack of having mercy. I think it's really important to understand mercy in relation to, to justice. Because justice is one of those things where we have to allow, I think, to do it properly. We have to allow room for the person to be sorry. This is a genuine sorrow, by the way, not just, I'm thawy and paying a fine or whatever else, but to have a legitimate sorrow, a legitimate remorse. Uh, wrath often leads to those sorts of feelings when it's in the seven deadly sin sense where it's overstepping its bounds and that sort of thing. There is, like I was uh, saying earlier, just get back to, uh, wrath also in a mob or group sense tends to be terrifying. This is often very hateful, very cruel, and often very unjust. Like, this is one of the problems with wrath, is the seeking of justice in this sort of wrathful sense, in this sort of deep anger, can often itself cause injustice. And we have to be very careful of that. It can also perpetuate action against each other. So kind of a Hatfield and McCoy's thing, uh, for those who are not familiar, it's kind of the idea of you have these two groups that keep killing members of each other as vengeance for killing members of each other, where you have, you know, so-and-so killed this cousin, and so they have to go and kill one of their cousins, and it just escalates back and forth with just violence and destruction. So you have to be very careful of that, because escalating a wrath like that, where it's repercussion for repercussion for repercussion, that sort of thing, can lead to some really nasty states. So you also have to be very wary of that kind of thing as well. That's also can happen with group sense. Also, one of the other big problems with group wrath sort of things, which we see a lot online, by the way, you just see, we, we usually call them dog piles, where people are just kind of piling on and you just, you can imagine a huge group of dogs like swarming in trying to chew and tear and rip at something, right? It's kind of that idea of a pack of wolves hunting something something and tearing it to pieces. That sort of idea behind a dog pile is is a scary one. And what happens with that is each person might meet out what is a reasonable amount of punishment for what happened. But in aggregate, when each person is doing that, it quickly eclipses what is at all reasonable. This is one of the problems with any sort of group activity like this. If it's not undertaken in a group sense, but rather individuals participating in part of a group, if that makes sense. I'm not sure I explained that very well. But just the idea where when people are reacting emotionally in anger, in wrath, 
each choosing to do this thing themselves, it becomes a mob that can be very powerful and very cruel. And when it doesn't step back and exercise its power in a reasoned way, then it is very dangerous and it can quickly snowball into a huge quantity of awful being leveled at somebody far beyond what is reasonable. If people saw, oh, this person has gotten, you know, the the talking to that they that they needed to get, I don't need to add to it and they stepped back, then you wouldn't have these problems. Or or if like if the group comes together and says, okay, we're going to appoint someone to just kind of spearhead this and say, hey, we've all talked, we think this is a problem, this is something that needs to be dealt with. Let's do something reasonable here. Let's enact a proper judgment. I mean this is kind of what a jury is supposed to do, right? But the problem is when every juror becomes executioner as well, then you have a reasonable punishment multiplied by twelve, if you're talking that twelve person jury, and you run into to too much, right? Because if one was reasonable, then 12 times is not going to be reasonable anymore, most likely. So that's just one of the, the dangers of Wrath as well, is when it multiplies like that, it becomes really terrifying and really devastating. So we have to be really careful about this Wrath thing, because it's easy for our righteous judgment, or our righteous wrath, or righteous anger to become unrighteous, to become unjust, our desire for justice to become a vengeful monster. And we have to be really careful of that, lest we fall into what the seven deadly sin is warning us about. So those are my thoughts on wrath. I do think wrath has a positive place as well. There are are times where well-controlled wrath, wrath that is done in sober judgment that does leave room for mercy, is a very correct thing. Righteous anger is not wrong. Righteous anger is a very proper emotional response to many things that happen. Righteous anger is a very just reaction to many heinous things that occur. We have to be really careful in how we're using that righteous anger, using that wrath, that we're being clear-headed about using it and making use of it, that in our anger, we do not go overboard. So those are overall my thoughts on wrath. The wrath of God, as I mentioned earlier, is a concept that is important to remember because for, I mean, these are based on on Christianity, for Christian believers, uh, the idea is that God is able to lay aside his wrath for forgiveness. And that is what Jesus Christ was supposed to to do. And that that is what we believe he did. So that he came to earth to offer us forgiveness so that we didn't have to face the wrath of God and his righteous judgment. And let us be careful not to try to make ourselves into that judge because we're pretty much not qualified and we have to be very careful about it. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and close. So until next time, you can like me on Facebook at facebook.com slash Ramblers. You can email me directly at cntier at gmail.com and you can support me financially at patreon.com slash Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.